Well, there's a um, lots of people complain that when they open the uh, when they uh, wake up in the morning time, they're hungry for a bowl of cereal. Well, they eat the bowl of cereal, and when they go to pour the bowl that the, the cereal into a bowl and they pour some milk over the cereal, and they grab a spoon and get ready to put a spoonful of uh, a cereal in the in their mouth, they see a dead bug, uh, a, a house fly, maybe somebody's hair in the uh, cereal bowl, not their hair, and. Um, and they're wondering, uh, how come? Uh, or, uh, every time they, or they open a, bo a box of cereal, or, well, well, not really open it. When they, when they get a bowl of cereal, they, they see the hair, they see the fly, the bug. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it becomes yucky. But however, 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 some members of the family or friends may, if you have a roommate, a roommate may leave the uh, box of cereal uh, open. They, they leave the lid up and... Bugs crawl into the cereal box. Not into the cereal itself, but into the box. You see? Um, so when you shake the box um, to pour a cereal, the bug comes out, the bug. Uh, lots of people, some people ca ca comment on me and ta comment my uh, my videos and tell me uh, this is what happens to them. Uh, and also they have pets, like cats. They, uh, and dogs, you know, the cats, they, they, they go on top of the kitchen counter and they knock over the cereal box. And sp the cereal spills on the floor. They got to uh, uh, sweep up the box of cereal. Or, you know, the cereal that's fall from the box, fell from the box. Then they say that, that they have dogs that, you know, when the dogs got to stand up and reach for the counter with their, with their front paws, two front paws, they, uh, their long nose sniff the box and sometimes knock the... Uh, the box off the counter. Many things happen where uh, that 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 can cause trouble uh, for a morning cereal, breakfast cereal eater. Uh, so what do you do in this case? You know it's going to happen again. Well, the solution for that I discovered um, was that I take these um, plastic bottles. You see here, you see the... Uh, you see the uh, crayon apple right here, bottle, ocean spray, and you see uh, cranberry uh, uh, juice. You see how it is right there? So what I do is I take off the label. I put some hot water, and I use a scraper, and I scrape off the labels. Then I'll remove the uh, top, and I'll clean the whole thing out. Once the you know once the uh, juice has been drunk, you know once the juice is uh, gone, you know everybody drank the juice and the, you get ready to chuck out the bottle or throw the bottle in the trash, whatever. Before you do that, um, when the bottle is empty, I, I I remove the label and I clean. As you can see, I clean the inside with soap and water. Very good. So to take out the smell of the uh, juice. As you see right here, see. And um, and I wash it very good, and until the smell is gone. Then I take the, the lid and I wash it too. But sometimes, when I'm not, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna be honest with you. The first time I washed this lid, when I first started doing this project, the first time when I was green, when I was a beginner, I kept wash, I kept washing the the, the 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 lid over and over again, and still it was smell, it was smell of uh, juice. Then I realized. I have these top, these see my fingers right here, this right here. I have this uh, little um, a disc inside it, this little white, that uh, white disc. Sometimes they come in aluminum, but here disc, and that's what smelled the juice. So I finally got a, a butter knife or 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 anything that can can loosen and take out the uh, these tabs or these uh, disc. Once I took that out, there was no more smell. I don't have to wash it again. It, the smell was in, in this uh, disc. So I removed the disc. It took me some time to realize that. Um, so I did. And right away, the smell was gone. Now, I, I dry, I wash and dry the um, the disc, the, this little, uh, I mean, this uh, lid, this lid. Of course, I threw away the disc. 
that was thrown away. But the uh, lid was washed again. Uh, even though the smell was n no longer there, I, th I took the disc off. I want to be sure. And I you know, I rewashed it. And I took a paper towel and I dried it up. I dried out, I dried outside, the, the outside of the um, bottle, this bottle out. And I air dried it for about a day. You know, I kept the, uh, the bottle, the plastic bottle, and the top out on the table um, to dry, right? And then I pour the uh, uh, cereal inside the, bo uh, inside the um, plastic box, uh, bottle, to keep it, so it's see what happens, if it works, if I can keep bugs out, cat hair out, uh, anything out. And how can I secure that, when, when the, and how can I be sure that when the uh, cereal falls uh, down off the counter, it won't spill? So this is the idea. I was, I was a trial, we call it trials and errors. I had an experiment. It took me a long time to remember to do this. Now, what I did, I, I, let, the, I let this air dry, the bottle air dry, and I let the top, um, the, the, the top was already dry. But I let it. But I waited for this to air dry, and I left the top right here, right here. Cause it's really dry. Cause I, you know, I dried it with a paper towel or whatever. But the inside of the bottle was still wet. Okay, so you know, of course, I, I shook some water out. You know, you know, I, I, on the sink, but it was still wet. I didn't want to put a paper towel inside here or anything else. I wanted to just to let it air dry. So about half a day to a day, it was nice and dry. So what happened? I put the cereal, the, the, the cereal, I had a cereal box that was already open. I didn't open a new one, of course not. But I had one that was already open. You, you know how you, you know how you, um, you know how you have a cereal and it, it, it's to the bottom, but you don't want, but you, but you don't want to eat the whole thing because you, you already ate, you already ate three quarters. And, and I ate about three quarters of the uh, cereal box, but there's a little a little left over at the bottom, and, and you don't want to eat it. So what do you do? I put it inside the uh, the, the dried up uh, bottle. So I went from doing this to doing this. See the cereal box? See what happened here? Right here. You see it? There you go. And then I put I took a piece of the box. That a piece of the, a, a box, you know, a part of the box that's the, that advertised the cereal. Like right here is uh, original um, Frosted Mini Wheat, and I got um, Kellogg Frosted Flakes. Now, these things were at the bottom. The cereal was at the bottom of the box, and I didn't want to eat anymore. So I took it and I put it there. So that's a good way to, 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 to make sure. And um, I, t I got scissors, and I cut out a small portion of the advertisement. So people... God, it's not only me, but I have family members and who want to eat cereal too. So I put I had an advertiser here, so everybody could see it. Who say? And, I, and so I took it and I put the cereal in, in the uh, plastic container that's already clean. So I went from here to this, as you can see, and the top. Of course, uh, I topped it off and everything, and so. That's the only way I could prevent bugs, hair, house flies, uh, animals or pets, like my cat that likes to go on top of the uh, kitchen counter and jump on there. Uh, and then the cat uh, will try to rub itself against the uh, bottles and knock the bottles down sometimes, like loot the box. This time, what happened is that now the cereal is protected from anything. If the bottle falls, It's okay. You see? So all you gotta do now, now what I do, um, I take the, uh, I, I take the, uh, this bottle now, the new bottle here that I have now, and um, I, li I leave it in my storage room, you know, my food storage room on the shelf. Uh, then every morning I take it out and leave it on the table for my family and me to, in case we want to eat it for breakfast, and, and I leave it there until the, uh, until the afternoon. Late afternoon, then I take it back. I just hold it in the handle like this, and I take it back and put it on the shelf. And the next morning, I do the same thing again. Same thing with this. How this a wine punch? This is a this is a a juice bottle. A green apple juice. Here it is right here again. This is Hawaiian punch. It's it's much wider, and I put cereal there. So what happened? 
And then I, 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 every afternoon, late afternoon, when I know no one wants to leave more cereal because it's almost dinner time, I take it back. See, so I can, so if while the cereal's on the table, the dining room table or kitchen table, you can put it like this. And you have to top right here to top it off. So if it falls off the counter, it doesn't spill. If any flies all around or any bugs or anything, it's okay. Okay? You you have no bugs in the uh, in the cereal box. You have no 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 fly, death flies or anything in the uh, in, in, inside the cereal. Anything, nothing. It's all okay. Okay. Now, the thing about it is, I already want, told you about the, uh, the lid. The lid has a little disc that you should take out. Okay. Or because the more you clean it, the more it's going to smell like the juice unless you take it out right away. Now, there's two kind of lids. Uh, inside, you got you got the, you got the, you got, you got a white disc. That's that's kind of a thick, not too not too thin. That comes out easily with, with, with a knife, and then you have one from the um, Hawaiian punch juice. That let me see. That's stuck. To, it's very thin. It's paper thin, and I think they glue it on. That one's harder to get out. You really got to scrape it. Not only do you have to scrape it with a, a butter knife, but you, but you got to also use a, a Brillo soap pad and stuff like that. If you look, let me see if I can show you. You'll see scratches on there. You see it? The scratch marks? Because that's the kind of, that's the kind of disc you have. Okay? Sometimes you have a aluminum disc. But either way, that's what that's what causes the smell. See? Now, sometimes now I just took this is uh, juicing here. This is not this is not this see you can see the juice stain right there. You see it? You gotta take that out. And it's a little disc there. That's that's gotta come out too. Now sometimes what happens when you have a disc, and you've been storing your food in a plastic plastic container for a long time, or cereal. You can use the rest. Of, I say food because you can store oatmeal, rice, uh, bean, dry beans, anything you want in these uh, bottles. But I understand one thing. In time, you may or may not see that when you when you store away food, the uh, lid. This part of the lid, the inside of the lid, may turn black. It may be maybe bacteria or something growing inside. You have to definitely, definitely clean it real well, real good. And if you have, um, if you cleaned it very well and you still get it, then you have to replace the top, not the bottle, but unless you want to, unless you want to replace the bottle and top and put the cereal in, in a different bottle. But it's okay. You know what I do? I, when I, when I have, when the bottle is no good, let's say the bottle is dented or it has a hole or whatever, I take these uh, tops, wash them and dry them, and I get a little a, a bag. Um, uh, it could be a sandwich bag, it could be a, a, any kind of bag, and I and I collect uh, and I collect all kind of tops. I, I I don't throw the tops away. I put them in a little bag. So if they, if if I need um, the tops in the future for for any of these bottles, because sometimes you find these bottles around the house, and you can't find the top. So sometimes, they, sometimes family members do that. They 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 um they unscrew a, a top from a from a ketchup or from a juice bottle or soda bottle and then and they displace or misplace the uh, top. You ever got that before? Especially with mayonnaise and stuff like that. They just leave the, the top somewhere. So I just collect these and I clean them and I put them in a small little a, a, a bag. And then in the future, if I see a, a bottle like this but no top, I go to my to my bedroom and I go into the drawer. And I take out the bag, and then I start to see which one fits in inside this thing here. Now, about cereal, okay? Not, I'm not talking about beans. I'm not talking about oatmeal or anything. This this video is about cereal to keep the bugs and the flies and everything out, and the hair and everything. Um, when you're going to store cereal for a short time, you know, you, you know, you put it on your on your food storage. Or on your, on your ca kitchen counter, whatever, and you're gonna eat the cereal uh, once, one, uh, what, what, uh, every other day. But you, you're gonna eat cereal uh, frequently. Uh, you don't need, to, you don't need to put oxygen absorber inside it unless you're going to um, have a long term. You can take this cereal here. I can fill it up with a, a, a whole box and put it uh, and, and, and put oxygen. You know what I do? This is what you do. Once. You have an empty bottle like this. After you clean it, you take an oxygen absorber if you're going to do long-term storage. And you put it right away into the bottom of the um, of the um, bottle, 
Okay, now some people put it on the bottom and top. They use two. Uh, I say about 300 cc. Some people use 500. But yeah, if you want to overdo it, you can overdo it. But it'll just, let, it'll just be more efficient with a 500, I guess. But 300 cc is just good. And you put, I put it in the bottom if it's long term, and then I fill it up to the top. And then I leave it on my, on my shelf for about six months to almost a year because I have other cereals to eat, you know, like this, halfway finished. And then I go, uh, and, and I say I cannot make it to the market or I'm too busy to go to the store. I go to my shelf and uh, just take out the uh, bottle with the uh, absorber, with the uh, action absorber, and uh, you, got, you got yourself some cereal. Um, you know how you always have to, re uh, you have to restock your, you go to the market to restock your, your shelves? So that's what happened. Now, there's an argument going around among um, food storagers. People, you know, people who store food, they say that, oh, you can uh, use an ox oxygen absorber on sugar, or it gets too hard, or salt, of course, of salt too. But um, um, so um, they say, but, this, but then other people was saying, you know you, you, you know, you know, you do your studies when you do food storage. You look at it, different people's opinion and people who's been doing it for a long time and see what they say about it so you can learn. So that's what I did. And so some people, oh, if you use, this, I, I, I just, some people say, if you use an oxygen absorber um, in your, in uh, cereal or, or well, let's say sugar, whatever sugar is, in time the sugar will get very hard and rocky. That's what some people say. The other people say no, it's not true. Uh, they had they, they put a they they put oxygen absorber in in a bottle of sugar they were storing for five years, and when they took it out, it was just a tiny bit, a tiny bit hard. You could take your fingers and just break it up. That's how uh, how minor it is. For five years, they they, they stored the sugar and it was okay. Only a tiny bit it got hard, but not too much. That's what some people say. So it's trial, it's trial and error, I guess. Um, you can have to experiment for your own self. Now, 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 the thing about it is this. This cereal has sugar, powdered sugar. This is a uh, frosted mini weed. This is a uh, uh, this is a uh, 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 calic frosted flakes. It has sugar. If you can see the white, you can see the sugar. Can you see the white? The white on the, on the flakes. So. Um, if you're going to keep it for a short term you only, you, you, and you're going to eat it, you know, eventually a, a month or two within that time, and you probably, you know, you probably less than that, then it's okay not to have the oxygen absorber. Uh, however, if you're going to keep it long term, it's up to you whether you're going to have the oxygen absorb, absorber or not. Um, but I would tell you, if I'm going to have it for a long time, why take a chance and make it hard, uh, make the, uh, the sugar get too hard, uh, just put the oxygen absorber. And that way, you don't have to worry about whether, it, whether it's true or not, whether it gets, uh, whether it gets hard or not. You just, um, uh, I, I don't put, I don't put actually jobs over mine. Um, some people do. Uh, you, know, you know what? If you're gonna, if you're gonna eat, uh, if you're gonna eat the cereal right away, you don't need, you don't need to have uh, any of that stuff. I, I've been experimenting for a long time. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing experimenting for a long time. One time, you know what I did? When I first started doing it, I, I, I read both sides. I heard both sides of the story, you know, about oxygen absorber and sugar and cereal. And so, you know what I did? I, I took two, two bottles like this, or one bottle, you know, trials and error. I didn't use a, a, an oxygen absorber for about a year, you know, on one bottle. And another bottle, I used an oxygen absorber. And, and after one year, when I, when I discovered, because I wanted to know which one is true, it doesn't matter. After one year, uh, the, the cereal is going to be eaten anyway. But if you're going to put it away for a long time, I don't use it. I use I don't use oxygen absorber uh, on my cereal, even, even though it has some sugars, you know, sugar on here. Now, my regular sugar, uh, we, we, we use sugar all the time. We cook all the time with sugar, so it's, we, don't use, we really don't store it for a long time. Uh, I live in a city where there's a lot of stores, and I can always, and my family can always go to the store and restock the uh, the storage. That makes sense to you. People who live far away from stores, uh, you know, away from the city or from the stores, whatever, or people who who have real, or who uh, well, it's not explained, but it's just like you know, 
we, if, if you're very, um, if you're one of those um, preppers, if you're a prepper and you worry about uh, doomsday destruction or some kind of electrical what uh, doomsday or something, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? And you and you're trying to store for a long time, then maybe uh, for many years, then maybe you want to look it into. Uh, you, you, if I was your experiment, because you don't know, right? If you if you put that in a sorbet or not, you don't know if it's going to get that hard or not. Because sometimes it, it, the sugar doesn't get hard uh, after five years. Only if if anything, a, t- a tiny bit. I think the most the most troublesome thing for sugar to go through is damp. If you, have, if you keep sugar stocked on your shelf and it's very damp, the room is very damp, then maybe the sugar will get hard. That's what I think. Because I had sugar and it was damp in the house uh, a couple of times, you know, uh, uh, a couple of times in, uh, uh, throughout the year in my stock room, I had my food storage, it was very damp. I had to put a heater in there uh, to keep it uh, okay because the sugar did get a little hard. Uh, it was to get hard. It's definitely shut away about mostly, uh, but uh, you're not supposed to put a. Sh- but they say you're not supposed to put a, an action of sober, a sober, in um, in your sugar. You're not supposed to put it. Half the people say that, but a quarter more of the people say uh, you can. So, my advice to you is to experiment. Take two containers like this. Put one without one and one with one and keep it in the shelf for about a year, two years, and see what happens. That's the only way. That's what I did, and especially for cereal. This topic is not about food, but for, uh, in general about cereal. They keep the bugs and the hair out. This is about cereal. Some cereal has sugar, like, uh, like um, honey smacks or sugar smacks or uh, sugar, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, um, well, a lot of cereals, you know, you, you have kids in the house, they want to eat a lot of sugary cereals, right? And you have to be careful with that. So you have to do an experiment. But most likely, the cereal you have in these containers is not going to last a long time. If your kids and you eat cereal often or off and on, uh, you don't have nothing to worry about. I have nothing to worry about when it comes to sugar. I got sugar that's not in the, in, in the bottle. It's still in, in, in the, in the uh, package that came in from the market and it stays for a couple of months and it doesn't get hard or anything. But the most enemy of the sugar is mostly not the oxygen as much as the uh, damp. If it's too damp. And I, have a, and I also have a, a curtain blocking the window so the room is dark. Uh, just worry about the humidity of the room. So you gotta do, if you're, starving with, if you're messing with sugar, storing sugar, that's my advice. Okay, but... Try to experiment yourself. Just clean the, uh, don't throw these out. And you'll see that if you go from here to this, now don't forget to put the, uh, the name of the uh, cereal there. Because even though you may know it, maybe your kids or other family members may not know what it is. Even though they may have an idea. Because they see the sugar on these flakes, they know it's probably, uh, it's probably um, um, uh, frosted flakes. And they know this is mini wheat because you can tell, right? First, you can tell the way it looks. But some cereal that you buy uh, may look like another cereal. And, you know, they're confused uh, which one it is. But like I say, cut, cut, get a piece of the box and cut it with the scissors and tape it on. Tape it on it because the tape comes off. So when this bottle gets empty and I want to put another cereal, I just got to wash it. Take this, you know, first I want to take the tape off and take the label off. I want to wash it and do the same thing I did the first time. And then I want to put, in, I want to cut another box with a different label, because if, if it's a different cereal, and with a different title. Okay? You can use, you can use the, same, uh, 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 the same plastic bottle more than once. However, however, um, I must tell you, remember, well, like I told you, the disc, it contains the smell. You might have to take the disc off. The little this disc right here, because that's what it, how, how many times you clean it, it's going to uh, smell unless you take it off, okay? And watch out for the black coloration of the inside, okay? If it keeps turning black after you wash it, uh, often time you have to replace the top or the or the whole thing, depending on you. And make sure that these things here, these little uh, threads around the bottle, are clear. Clean them up real good, okay? So that's how it is. What I like about these bottles that you can hold it like this and carry it and go like this 
to uh, pour it in. And this you can carry. See? Hawaiian punch. See? And then you have these uh, indents right here. See the indents right here in the bottle? So if you want to pour it into your cereal, you grab it You grab it from the index, from the indents. See the indents? One here and one over here. And you pour it into your cereal. No flies, no bugs, no hair, no spillage, unless you happen to drop it when it, without the lid. And that does happen too. But it won't fall off, but it will not fall out easily. You know why it won't fall out easily? Because the uh, the mouth of the uh, of the bottle is not that wide for it to fall out that easily. If it does, one or two will fall out of the cereal because the size. Now the hardest thing about you're gonna have is putting the cereal inside the mouth of the bottle. Because these these are uh, these um the opening in the mouth of the bottle may be too narrow to put cereal unless you use your hands or, uh, or a little spoon. The reason why, I want to tell you why, I use a funnel. I, I went to the store and bought a, a, a funnel set. You know, you, you know a, a funnel. Um, I say about, they come in a package, about uh, six, I think, thick, six or f five or six of them, different sizes. And when I used the funnel, the cereal went into the top part of the funnel, but the bottom, the tube, the opening at the bottom that goes into the bottle was too narrow. The, 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 the diameter of the hole was too narrow that the cereal couldn't fall down into it. So I couldn't use the, uh, I couldn't use the, uh, the funnel. But what I did use, what I did use, um, uh, I used a little spoon and it helped, and it did work, but too slow. And, and the cereal will fall to the table. So I finally washed my hands real good with soap, water. I dried it, did everything I can, and I just put it in like that. Now, if you can get a, a big one, now my sister told me that they sell funnels with the, with, with one, with, with the side that goes with the tube side that's open uh, at the, inside the bottle that's very wide. Um, if you could, but my advice to you is if you're going to use a plastic bottle, and especially this size right here, this uh, Foster Mini Wheat. These, they're, very, they're pretty big, the, uh, the, the pieces. You better, uh, it's better if you use a very wide bottle on the top here. But either way, you can still use your hand and put them in there. That's what I did here. Okay, I washed it real good with soap, water, and everything. And whew, okay? Unless I, I'm going to look for a funnel that I can use to put in there. I try to use, I, I use, I use everything I can. I even use a measuring cup, but it keeps falling out because the, uh, the size of the... Uh, of the opening of the uh, bottle, okay? If you can find a way to do it easily, okay? I'll show you some magazine and just roll it up into a funnel and probably put it one side, but you never know. The, ma the magazine may be dirty or contaminated, so I of course not. I didn't use it. You know, of course. You know, you don't, you don't just use a magazine or, or paper. But um, that's what happened. So so if you can find another way to do it, that's good. I'm going gonna, gonna to try to use a paper towel roller you ever seen this cardboard that comes in the paper towels? Unscented, though, of course. No scented, unscented. I want to see if I can use that next time. I want to get a, a you know, the, the paper towel. Uh, I want to, uh, when the paper towel is, uh, is done, it's finished, you're left with a, uh, with a tube, uh, a tube. I want to try doing that, but I think it's, the tube may be too wide, too uh, narrow, too. So I don't know what to do. I want to look for a way to do that. So that's going to be the hardest part you're going to have is put it into the bottle. Okay, but if you but if you know how to do it, well, lucky you, good for you. All right. So this is the way you can prevent bugs and hair and house flies and spillage. This is how you can prevent the cereal, uh, protect the cereal uh, from um, from all those things. All right. All right. So have a good day, and I'm just letting you know I I, I did all this by trial. An error. So, like you, I'm, I'm a beginning um, prepper, uh, 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 not really a, a doomsday prepper, but a situational prepper. If you go to my um, other Wise Out 2 or you go to one of my videos, uh, my other videos I have, uh, you'll see with the picture of the owl or with my name on it or whatever. I got two or three other uh, places on YouTube you can go to. You see, I talk about a situation. Um, uh, storage, okay? I'm a situational storage, storer. I'm not a doomsday storer, uh, okay? So that will explain to you uh, more about my, uh, what it is. Um, okay, so don't throw your bottles of juice away. This still has juice in it, see it? 
Once we finish it out, I'm going to clean it and do this again. Now, you can do it. You can take a soda bottle and do it, but the mouth of the bottle is too narrow. And if I use that, a, a bottle of soda, after I clean the top and I clean the bottle, I will use it for uh, uh, rice. I will use it for um, uh, salt and and stuff like that. And uh, maybe uh, beans, uh, stuff like that. Something small that can fit into the soda bottle mouth. But um, I must caution you that uh, with soda bottles, um, uh, you have to be careful how about uh, uh, action of sober. You gotta think twice because uh, the, the bottle of soda is very small, and you probably won't, uh, won't be able to fit it in there unless you fold it and everything. If you if you're gonna use uh, uh, if you're gonna store dry beans and and um, and uh, rice and oats like you know oat, like oatmeal oats and stuff like that, uh, I'd rather put it in a bigger bottle like this. I don't use soda bottles. You know, two liter bottles. I use this kind of bottle here. Uh, I just put the rice here. I want to, the next, this, this one here, I want to finish, uh, when, when this is empty, I want to wash it and clean it and I want to probably put rice. And this one here, I probably put oatmeal. Or I'll put rice here, put oatmeal on this one. It has a nice handle. And stuff like that. And I want to put, expir I'm going to put an expiration date on there. And I want to put the name and the, uh, of the product that's inside. And stuff like that, okay. So that's what I want to do, and uh, that's just an idea. So that's the only way I can keep. Uh, uh, this is really for cereal. A topic about cereal and keeping the uh, the bugs and the flies and the hair, and, and and keeping the cereal from spilling off the counter, especially for animals that knock them off the counter. Or you have a, a child that gets mad and wants to knock it off the counter. You know, since uh, kids. Oh, I'm, I know a lot of kids uh, in my family when they were very small. Now they're all grown up and have their own kids. They, they, they get mad and they go like this. Yeah, yeah, and knock it off the counter just to be a, a pain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just to, just, just to have an attitude. So, um, so you always got to be careful with the cereal boxes. All right? And you might have people in your family or people that come over that leaves the, uh, the cereal box um, open. You know? And then... That's it. You find things inside it next morning when, or when you, when, you, when you decide to have cereal. Okay? So this is my recommendation. You go from this to this. Okay? Especially if your cereal is, 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 is at the bottom. If you, if you, if this, if this is especially good if you eat the cereal halfway or three quarters of the way and you have a little bit left over. You ever seen that before? You only have a little bit left over in the box? If you leave it on the counter, uh, you're, you're afraid a, 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 a fly or a bug or a hair may get into it. Just do this. See? There you go. See? This was up to here. See? But at the eating the cereal, at the, all the family members, it was halfway down at the bottom of the box. So I'll put it here. Okay? All right. Have a good day. This is just my recommendation, my free advice to you if in case you want to worry about things, okay? This is, just for, this is a topic about cereal, not food. All right? And about sugar and the action of sober, you, you really should test it. Get two bottles and test it for yourself and how long you're going to have it. That's the best way for you to do it. Because if you listen to, if you listen to different, peop, different people, then you're not going to have knowledge on your own. 